Hey everybody, it is new Looper Day! It certainly is, but in this video we are checking out the new Sharon Looper X. Nice looping, Mr. Pete. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, welcome back, everybody. Yes, monumental day uh, because uh, who we have Ed definitely. Are you the king of loops and he's the prince of loops, or is he oh, the king the other of way loops around. and you're the prince of loops? I'm, I'm, I'm probably you... old enough to be his dad, I would think, <laughs> perhaps. But you know. Yeah, what um, a great day. I mean, Mr. Pete is a, a looping legend. Uh, Ed Sheeran <laughs> is a, a looping Jedi. Um, and so I'm really interested today to talk about Looper X and in a different video, we'll talk about Looper Plus. Um, mm. Ed Sheeran has built his whole career on um, being able to make songs live in front of thousands of people, yeah. hundreds of thousands of people using, yeah, now, yeah. you know, looping kind yeah. of kit. You've become known on <laughs> YouTube as, as making amazing electric guitar style, you know, oh, songs you. using <laughs> loopers. Yeah. So we're talking about Looper X in this video, separate video on Looper Plus. Yeah. And Looper X is the sort of, this is the daddy it's of the, the all. Ultimate, it's the, the ultimate Looper station, uh, whether, yeah. whether you're going to call it that. But. So anybody that wants to make loops like a band, Looper X is going to be your go-to yeah. product. For me, it's like, it's like a multi-track studio in a pedal board. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into the detail of this, but, but to just sort of hold your attention, if you're a musician, <laughs> I guess predominantly a guitar player, if guitar is your main instrument, but you could be, you know, you could be any multi-instrumentalist. Yeah. I have to say that twice. Multi-instrumentalist. <laughs> and you want to create music, potentially to do live, but I think, you know, often just, you know, at home or, you know, in a, in a little home studio. Yeah. And you don't necessarily want to have to use a DAW and uh, understand how to get into sequencing and you're thinking, oh, I don't, even if I did do that, how would I trigger all the, you know, start stops from foot yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think Looper X could be the solution. Yeah. So what, what's the overview, Mr. Pete, I mean, of this the, product? The overview is, I mean, it's changed a lot, but it is very rocket, isn't it? It's, and the foot switches are now cast iron specific to 
Ed's specification. So he's got that big chewy. I don't know if you, mm -hmm. you know, we see that he, he makes that. So they've made these uh, new foot switches, which are really good and really easy to hit. And they are on, I mean, the accuracy is so important in looping because mm -hmm. you have to get it right. Because if you don't get it right, then it doesn't work, right? Uh, so the overall, you've got four switches here. Ed's layout, this is because it is essentially a, a Sheeran Signature looper pedal. This is how he uses it. So he's got his four tracks running. We can go into just track mode really quick to see. Um, you've got tracks, how you can arm and disarm. You've got play and record button. You've got a stop button. You've got a mode and function button. Then you've got four inputs here, which you can have microphones or instruments in with levels. You've got a main and your headphones and your aux, which is like a track you can put mm -hmm. into it. And then you've got the function button over here. Uh, that's basically the main sort of quickly so, pff, layout of it, right? What, what we were really fortunate, we got to speak to um, JJ, Johnny Jenkins, yeah. who has worked with Ed for, I think it's over it's, it's 12, 11 years, 13 yeah, years yeah, now. Since, since uh, the and Johnny designed with Ed the original Chewy. Johnny made it, the yeah. original Chewy board, or Chewy 2 as he's using now. And Chewy then two. over the last three or four years, have been working with... Um, Head Rush, yeah. who uh, have a, 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 you know, if you like, the, the sort of forefather to this, which yeah, was the, the looper board. Which we've used a lot here. Yeah, we yeah. use a lot. And so essentially what, ha what Ed's been using for, the, for uh, recently, more recently, were sort of prototypes, if you like, of that, taking that looper board and building them into his sort of chewy style setup. So yeah. what you're going to see on here is you're going to see certain things that have come from Chewy, certain things that have come from Looper yeah. Board, yeah. and certain things that are just new in terms of workflow and stuff. Yeah. But ultimately now, this is Ed's live board. Yeah, which is, um, which is impressive because he'll play yeah. to 100,000 people in a stadium. Crazy. And honestly, it, I know <laughs> Ed's music is subjective. And some people will yeah. love it. Clearly, millions of people have bought his records and love it, and other people don't like it. And that's fine. That's all music has yeah. a, a, is subjective. But if you do, if you just go and watch the video of there, there's a five minute video that that um, these guys have put out, this Ed's put out uh, to to promote, you know, the the Sheer and the Looper X board. Yeah. And. I was talking to Johnny about the time restraints. He's so busy. Yeah. He literally had to, it was like, I've got an hour. Yeah. Let's do the promo of this. Quick, set it up. I'll and come he and do literally the just live yeah. does, he the just loop. builds this song. It's yeah. just him, his acoustic guitar, bit of keyboard, vocals. He builds this song. He's tapping like a demon yeah. to just, you know. To make sure to, you get the right thing in, right yeah, thing out and, all the time. And to make it musical. Because yeah. it's like he's stopping tracks, starting tracks, yeah. overdubbing tracks, deleting Singing the Singing at the same time. And playing honestly, guitar at the, same time. the bit, Do that, a little keyboard. the bit that I couldn't help, that I couldn't help at the end of this video, going, what, a, like the the talent, the looping talent, whether you like the song or not, as I said, put that to one side. Just think about what he's doing. Under pressure, he had an hour. He's probably done one take and nailed it because, yeah. in fairness, he's used to doing this every night to hundred thousand people. Yeah. So he probably doesn't. Need the press is a little takes. bit bigger than just doing it. In yeah. here, when there's no people um, watching. But anyway, it's insane. So yeah. look, yeah. we're going to start this video now. We are going to deep dive a little bit in this video. Yeah. So you, you heard a track at the beginning. You'll hear another one at the end. And I'm sure Pete will mess around in here. So this is our main menu here. So yeah. you've got uh, 15 icons here. It's all touch screen. Uh, yeah. Or what's very clever, again, you don't have to use the touch screen. A lot of the functionality can be uh, accessed exactly. by just holding buttons down here. Yeah. Um, there's functions over here, you know, so again. But I think for the for this demo, it's gonna be a lot easier if we just use the touch screen. Yeah. So just going from start to finish, perhaps you wanna do the explanation of what each window is. So our first window. So the first window is, this is how Ed likes to see his, apparently. So he'll have all the tracks running here so you know he can have acoustic guitar you can have his little keyboard you can have some singing over here which you can all root internally as well uh i actually found out you can you can also name the tracks which is quite cool so you can you know you can go in and you can say guitar for instance if that's what you want yeah and then you rename it then there's that so you know what it is so that's pretty cool uh then there's a wave workflow you see, we've, this is the track that we heard in the beginning. So this is where you see the wavelengths. This is how I kind of like to see it, because um, you will see, you know, th this is your main 
you see the little, there's a little king, there's a little crown up here. So that would be your main track because yeah. we've used this in the sync flow. Um, is that a good, I good idea just to hop into this and, and no, talk we'll about get, those we'll now? We get, we get to, to yeah. the end, okay. Then you've got a mixer where you've got, um, you know, track guitar one, two, two, and I'm calling it guitar now. Uh, you can got your effects, you can turn on and off, you can mute them, you can solo them one at a time. Then you've got your effects block, which is quite um, interesting. I mean, it's not, this is not the, you know, head rush. It's not head rush prime. It's not the it, prime. Level? So the effects are not, the, it, it is, I don't think it, they need all the processing power that this can do to loop everything. So this is good. Um, basically what you do is you have your four tracks I'm just turn on those off and then you can add on the guitar you get different effects or your vocal or whatever. this is one of the things that's been yeah. enhanced from yes. looper board so ed now has worked on his own set of effects that he would want to use on rack. then yeah but then in, a, the in addition to that you've got vocal effects guitar effects and you know yeah. it's guitar effects again we're all sort of guitar players here right so you're probably familiar with this essentially Presets. the basic idea is you go right i just i just want like a, a rhythm guitar sound yeah. done and That's then you it. get it, it defaults you to a type of amplifier uh you can if you want to choose the type of cab emulation mm -hmm. and then you just got some simple pedals yeah so again don't don't forget you know and easy um, to remove like again. you know kempers and quad cortex and all that kind of yeah. stuff it's, not, it's that. not that however everything that you've heard in the loops that we did used pete's little pedal board yeah. and the basic technology and that you know the basic amp i use uh, ed's rack well here. we can go in and see so what have we done in here so i did edit it a little bit so you know i have and the amp for instance i've chosen a 2 by 12 cab mm -hmm. instead you can choose lots of different things you can also choose a radio yes <laughs> why not yeah there's bass caps in here and um i put a little bit of reverb on and there was a four band eq yeah. at the end compressor so that's how that the sound that you heard directly coming into your ears was that so that's pretty cool yeah uh, you can also assign pedals oh that's right because there's what there's like wah wahs and whammy pedals and stuff yeah. if you've got the expression yeah. pedal attached you can and you can assign that. them to here as well wow um, i'm not so but let's move i want to move past the effects thing because yeah it's like don't you know this is obviously a relatively expensive device here yeah and we're not Least trying billion. to say that the effects in here are comparable if you just went and spent this kind of money on it on another board it's just super super handy yeah. and it will do a job exactly uh tuner obviously it's a good tuner it works really well you can save a loop here no, i'm not going to do that right now you can do a new loop so if you click a new loop i'm not going to do that because we've got that in yeah. here but already. you can store hundreds of loops yeah, within, so within here. Exactly. You? You've got your loop manager. So here's yeah. some stuff we've made. Uh, also, there is, I've got a SD card in here where I've loaded loops from yeah. the previous thing. You can load drums. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, what, what I thought was quite cool on that as well is each loop, say, not only does it save the loop but it saves the scene as well so yeah. if you've got a specific set of effects you might have some specific audio routing uh, you, you, there are even different types of loop modes depending on how you want to loop that will all be remembered within any loop exactly. that you save so let's we can quickly do that actually so here's the loop that i was running here now mm -hmm. uh, it sounds a bit like this You know, easy to... to uh, let, do you know what, actually, no, just show that because I okay. kind of feel right. like if you... So well, this is a four-track loop. Yeah. And again, although there's only four tracks, all those tracks can be overdubbed as many times as you want. And yeah. within the, the sort of some of the functionality is to undo layers of dubs and stuff. But if we just... This is a very typical way that Ed... You'll see Ed put a, a track together. Yeah. So when Pete's doing a track, Typically, there'll be a bass, a drum line, a bass yeah. line, a rhythm guitar part, maybe two rhythm guitar parts, and then yeah. you just play over the top. Yeah. So you're not really turning on and off tracks. No, as such. not for not for but, this bit. But Ed, when you see Ed doing live yeah. stuff, he's triggering and stopping tracks all the time. Exactly. And, it, and this is just to show you how easy that is to do. It's super so, easy. These buttons feel really good as well. Yeah. They're great on the foot. They, they, you can wear big boots and still hit them without yeah. missing some. So um, one track, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D first one here is my drum track we should note that Pete's in what's called mute mode now yeah so these uh, when we arm these we're essentially these four buttons across the top are muting tracks yeah exactly so and track two is 
worse than a guitar. This is not a guitar now. That, oh, that's true. Yeah. It was drums. <laughs> so, and I could then mute drums. And all these guitar sounds, by the way, are the guitar effects yeah, that are exactly. in. Exactly. So then you've got track number three, three, which is another, just a step, like that. And then we got the keyboard bass at the end, I think it was. Oh, it's a normal bass. It was, yeah. So I can. And this is what Pete means about um, how critical it is that the looper is responsive. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be, you don't, you don't want any latency when you hit a button and going, oh yeah, the track didn't quite start on time. You don't want to be able to go in and out like this, for instance. Two, three, four. If anyway. this hasn't been, uh, I, don't, I think we mentioned the outputs again. What's great about fact, this yeah. and what uh, makes such a difference if you're either trying to do any kind of post-production, you know, remixing of your track, or of course if you're Ed Sheeran and playing live, yeah. is this is being mixed like a band. This can go out it's, four it's tracks. It's not like your normal looper where, no. you know, however many tracks you layer up are just coming out of a sort of a stereo mix. This is, uh, this is four separate outs that can all then be mixed by your front of house or remixed by you in post. To, uh, and that's, to be honest with you, the number of times that, this, what, that's actually why we use the looper board in here so often, yeah. is you sometimes when you're you know, doing music for videos and stuff, you just go, ah, drums are a bit too loud, aren't they? Yeah. And of course, if you've mixed it all on a single looper, there's nothing you can do. Exactly. Whereas on this, you uh, can. It's, you can. And also, it's really handy for, see now I've, your I've OCD. named it. <laughs> I've named it now. It's really handy because when you save the loop onto your mm. SD card or into the internal memory, you can actually take that and you'll have the four tracks that you then can import into Logic or whatever, yeah. and then you can mix them in there. And it's really good for, you know, I use this when we do loops in the past to make backing tracks out of. Yeah. Because it's, it's uh, ideas that you can use later on. Anyway, so the loop manager. That was, you can load all your stuff. There's your um, library, isn't it? Yeah, and then you've got the storage, so you can see we've got five gigabytes on the well, internal drive. And in real numbers, so, okay, so there's about eight hours of internal yeah. memory. Yeah. And then if I remember rightly, of course, if, you've get, if you get one of these new whopping great big, you know, two terabyte SD cards, you've got years of audio. You can put you a can hard save. drive in it as well. Oh, can you? Yeah, so you wow. can have an internal hard drive, so you, can, cool. you, know, you can loop forever and ever. Uh, backing tracks, that's a, you can load your own backing tracks in, so if you do go and buy one of Anderson's backing tracks. Well, this was cool as well. This is another feature that came over from Looperboard here. Yeah. So if you want a backing track, but you want to be able to, again, just, I suppose to an extent, it's sort of just like an extra long loop, isn't it? But yeah. It's a whole song, like a yeah. five minute backing track, and mm -hmm. you can start, stop, fast forward, rewind, all those kind of things, the same as you could within a loop, but from the pedals, which is yeah. cool. Uh, loop settings, so this So this is, is probably the most important at its core of the type of loop that you want to do, right? So that we're into this looper mode now. Yeah, but we can just start with the tempo. Of course, you can set your tempo, you can set your time signature, whether it's be 6 8 or you know, 3 4 or whatever you call it. You can have a click on and off, you can have a count in where you want 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you can start looping. Then it's the looper mode, which is... So th yeah, this, is, this yeah. is really key. And this actually, again, this feature it kind of is on both of these loopers. Yeah. It's really important. Yeah. And I'll do my best to explain it, all right? <laughs> so multi-mode is Ed's go-to mode. Yeah. And that is a four-track looper, but yeah. where all four tracks are synced and defined to the same length of whatever your primary track that you put yeah. down. So as soon mm. as you do your first track, if that's two bars or whatever, a certain set length or whatever, that's that's what every other track has to follow. Yeah. And that's how Ed loops and yeah. he uses overdub mode and does all that. Yeah. Sync mode. Yeah, that's what we use here. Yes, yeah. so sync mode is where your, your primary track is looped in, but the second, third and fourth track can be uh, divisions or multiples of that track. So if you had a two bar track in, yeah. you could do your second track could be four bars yeah. or it could be six bars or yeah. whatever, or it could be one bar. Yeah. Um, it's up to you. So you've that's got a little do. bit more flexibility so there. So when we do load, load a drum loop in, that will set, if that's a four bar drum loop, that will then, that, that will be our main thing, but we can yeah. do eight bars of, if I've come up with something else or yeah. whatever. Song mode yeah. is, and I've got to, apologies if I'm uh, reading this off. So song <laughs> mode is four looper tracks that vary in length and are played back independently. So I suppose that's almost, that's a slightly odd one because almost, the, 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 for, for me, almost the point of a looper 
is to give you that primary track yeah, that you and then, then build you up, on. Yeah. But this is saying if you don't want to do that, if you literally just want four completely independent loops running, intro, you can verse, do that. chorus, bridge, whatever, and Could you can be. you can yeah. you know similar. Um, in the band mode. Band is uh, says a combination of sync and song modes has a pri that has one primary track, mm -hmm. um, and then the three other tracks will play completely independently as song tracks. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, free is four completely just, unsynced looper tracks. If I'm totally honest, with you, I'm not sure what the difference then is between song and band. Free and free and song. There's but, there there'll be a one main loop that you go to right, with free is right. you can have tempos and length and everything is just completely free so you can just loop whatever you want on top of it all so anyway that's um, your that's your basic mode so yeah. again and again whatever uh mode you decide to use when you save that loop it'll remember that yeah. what you can't do is create a loop and then go oh I wish I want to change the mode that it's yeah, in. No. That will then delete, delete whatever all, you've yeah. done and, and um, you have to start again. Then you've got track length. Uh, so you can just you auto, can actually define yeah, you can, can yeah, you you can. A, an actual length of track if you want. Yeah, one shot, decay. I'm not sure what that is really, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Time stretch as well, so it can auto sync yeah. to tempo, which is pretty good. Time stretch, it's a, you know, if, you, if you're a little bit slow mm. on one of them, it can do that as well. Of course, that's why it needs all the processing what, power the, in here. One of the things that Ed says in the uh, background video to this, and it, it resonates with this kind of menu that we're in now, yeah. is Ed was kind of saying, like, it's a bit like an iPhone. Everybody buys an iPhone, yeah, yeah. and we all get like the twenty percent of what an iPhone does, and yeah, we yeah. all use that. And yeah. sort of, you know. But then the real specialists will find oh, that creative that thing be, that you yeah. can do in that other eighty percent that most of us won't use. Yeah. And he was basically saying that's what he wanted to achieve with LooperX. It's like twenty percent of us. It's me. Will use like. Yeah, all yeah. of this bit, mm -hmm. and then the really creative musicians going, oh, I wish I could do that. this weird but thing. You, you probably can on this. Yeah, and then you've got all the pedals here. You can customize them as well to so do different things. Customize so, their functions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you don't want Ed's workflow, you can make your own one. So just, you know. Uh, global settings, this is then where I've changed. <laughs> yeah, I uh, didn't realize this. So Ed's, Ed's default looping logic is it's record, overdub, play. Yeah. And ours in here, and I, again, I find it simpler, is to go record, play, overdub. Yeah. That, so and that you just choose. Set I think choose. his, the way, the, why he, a lot of people do that, and m most loopers are set to, to being, I think, well, maybe they're not anymore, but, uh, but if you play something, you loop it when you click it, then you overdub immediately. But that means that you have to know what you're doing yes. next all the time. Yes. And of course, he'll know that because he knows the song yeah. and he knows exactly, he's practiced it a million <laughs> times, played it a million times, so he knows what comes next. And then you can, you know, you, when you arm a track, you, you go to the next one and yeah. record on this one, it'll overdub on that, go to the next one. So yeah. that's, you just pick that there. I like to have a little bit more time because my yeah. brain's a bit old. So, <laughs> and then you can do whole on, you know, it, this is all just, this is all just customization yeah. within the apparel. Then you've got phantom power. So if you've got, have a microphone, phantom power, you can do that. You've got line in, you can tune output into headphones, blah, blah, USB. So of course, yes, yeah, so you can use this as an audio interface as yeah. well as, uh, yeah. as well as just for, you know, editing exactly. and file You can set storage. sample rates all the way up to 96K, which is really high. You've got MIDI. So you can, you can find, you, anything can be MIDI controlled or if I you're running a big old how cool, show on the background, yeah. you know. How, how cool was it? Again, I, I imagine there must be some time clock stuff that it, well, actually I say that. I think Ed is quite self-contained with this, but he does have the luxury of having an official looper tech. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that's what that's what we need. We need a, we need a looper tech, tech for right, our it studio. Is essentially, me, yes, isn't it? He is playing. He is playing to hundreds of thousands of people. The, exactly. So, and that's it. So that's your. Oh, that's a good shout, actually. Um, the, firmware. The, um, that's the latest firmware. The Sharon team did say uh, the very very first batch of these that have gone out will be shipped with version 1.0.0. Okay. And that we are already on 1.0.1, yeah. which actually. Hasn't, I don't think it's about fixing anything. I think they decided that, they, that Ed wanted one of the menus to look slightly that was on, different. That was on, was on this, this one, one here, yeah. But yeah, so if, you, if, you get one of, if you're one of the first people to buy one of these loopers, chances are yours is going to arrive yeah. with 1.0.0 on it. So just do the quick... And I updated these and it was super easy to update. Yeah. So no problem there. Now, 
here we go. Now you got your routing options as well in here because you got your four inputs and you got your four outputs. You can route anything to go in on what kind of track you want it to. So for instance, now here, everything is set to go in. So anything that goes in can go in on any track, yeah. but I can essentially just say that I only want input two to go in on that and then come out of that. So that's, that's really cool. Um, it is, to be honest, the audio routing, I think, was, I remember from the old looper board, was, yeah. was always something where you just went, hang on a second, I've just got to pause, because it's, yeah. it's much more sophisticated than just, yeah, input one doesn't always go to output one. No. You know, you, you can essentially have any input recording to any track and then coming out of any output, yeah. and you've got different mixes for headphones, different mixes for outputs and stuff like that. So it's important, again, this will absolutely appeal to, to the, the live performing musician yeah. that's going, hang on, this is how I want to, uh, this is how I want my um, loops to be mixed. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's super cool. I mean, it, we don't necessarily, I know the bass is going in on track four, I could literally just go, like that, so I'm plugged into number four mm. with the bass or whatever, it only goes in here, nowhere else, can, so yeah. I can't play a guitar on yeah. accidentally on one track, right? Yeah. So that's super easy. You do have to set that every time, that's what we talked about, you do have to set this every time you go into and make a new loop. So, a new loop, that's yeah, right. Yeah, a new loop, yeah. Funnily enough, one of the yeah. things that we talked to, the, that to it was a really good discussion. We had the, the, yeah. the, the guys from the Shear and Looper team were really open-minded to features and functions mm. that, that Pete and I were saying, mainly Pete in fairness. And one of the things, as, as Pete rightly said, although there's no, there's no way currently to save a sort of a, a loop of scene template. as such, yeah, or template. template yeah. what, so what they said was, well, what you'd need to do is you'd need to create a loop mm -hmm. with all of your routing and, yeah. and setup, and then essentially delete the audio tracks from that loop by holding and then this. and then save it mm -hmm. and then when you want to do a new loop recall that but they did yeah. take on board that actually it would be a cool feature for a future uh, software update yeah so to when, just once you be said that save it saves this scene overall and, yeah so it, i'm, I'm sure you'll see thing. things like that coming yeah. in the future which is cool because as you say when yeah. they listen to that stuff like that that's yeah. so important you know so if you have right people so we're nearly there uh transfer that's when we're not going to do that but that's you, you set it up basically in in the transfer mode when you hook it up to your computer with the USB. And then you've got the firmware, it's the same thing, connect to that, and then it just opts there. It's super easy. And it's easy. full Mac and PC yeah. compliant. Yes. So What's that, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, deep dive. So you, at the beginning of the video and, and at the end of the video, you're gonna hear the sort of, the, if you like, the loops that, that Pete and I did when we were, well, Pete did really, I didn't do anything. Uh, but <laughs> There's no uh, IM team. We created. But just to show you how easy this is to do, um, and how you might uh, load in a drum track or whatever. Let's create one. So Pete, let's do it. Tell us about the how you get your drums. In, yeah, because that that's slightly different, perhaps. To you know, we're not talking about hooking up a drum machine or playing these in live, are we? No, no. So you know, we talked about this before. We used the Yurtbot drums, but there's lots of drums loops that you can get from different places. Firstly, I'm just gonna here's the track. But first, I'm just gonna delete this by holding down this button. Yeah. It's always a bit so this scary. Is the, this is the clear. Well, I like you get, I get, oh, oh no. Oh, so you've you, got you like get, three seconds <laughs> yeah. to go. Oh, that's brilliant. And that's actually pretty handy because yeah. I remember when we did it in the beginning and, and it took me a little while to learn the workflow on this compared to the other one. Uh, but you do have in your functions, so you hold it down one, you get all the different things, you can fade, speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can hold it down again and then you can get the peel function where it peels back layers of the track like onions. <laughs> or you can clear the track. So let's say I now hit this mode It'll oh, arm I the see. tracks, yeah, so, it clears, the top, so it and you've got clear. track one, two, three, four. So I want to clear track two. Boom, done. Boom. Can I right. re can I undo that though? No, I don't think I can. But that doesn't matter. So I'm, I just want to clear them all. So boom. So we go back out. You know, it's really that simple. Yeah. And you click that. Now you're back into the workflow. But I really want to do is hold that down and clear everything just to make sure that we're all done. So now it's all cleared, right? So got let's it, say we, we, the way that we make a loop, firstly, I'll, I'll go into here and I'll make sure I'm in sync mode because that's the one I Kitchen like to use. Kitchen sync mode. Kitchen sync. Throw it all in. Throw it all in there. <laughs> and then I like to be in the wave mode so sorry, of track so mode. you're saying so Ed likes track mode. So yeah, track mode he's... is just levels, right? It doesn't give you any yeah, indicator. It does, oh, no, right it across gives the top, on the top, top here. It? Plus you have got this nice little Ooh. ring around this that'll tell you when you're looping and well, that'll be As you're then. looping, we can flip between the two modes. Yeah, we can we? do, just absolutely. See. I just like to see because the way we do when I load a, a yeah. drums up. So I'll go into here, I'll go into my uh, loops, my drums. So these are all 
loops that you've got from Yurt Rock and yeah. you've saved on a you saved on an SD on card SD and cards. just plugged it in. Yeah, the and then I could preview them. So. Yeah. Tell, tell the guys about that little shear and looper uh, conversion. Yeah, so there was a conversion. So if you've got a track that's, it needs to be 44, uh, 16 bits. There needs to be 16 bits in here. I think there's, there's, there is, it needs to be something to be in here. And there is a little app that, they, that you can download, uh, which you just drag and drop your track in or your drum track or whatever it is. And then you convert it and then you can stick it in here. Super, super simple, which is really handy to have. So that means you can convert any audio file, can you, into yeah. something that this will Absolutely. Uh, play back? Absolutely. Let's take this one. So I'm just going to have to go and set my tempo. I need to say to you as well, because this may not be obvious at this point. As far as we know, this is the only looper on the market that you can audition your drum tracks from within here. Yeah. Where every other looper we've uh, found where you um, you want to play along to a drum track, you've just got to load that drum track in yeah. and use it. Whereas at least with this, you can have hundreds of drum tracks in here and choose the one exactly. that you like. Exactly, it's super, super helpful. Uh, I have to set my BPMs. I'll hit the BPM button here, or the screen. I'll set it to 93, because that's what it was. Then I go back into my track. So just interestingly on that, again, because this is a preset drum loop, mm -hmm. you've got to tell the looper what the BPM is yeah. of that drum track. So if, what if you didn't know? Is that is that a problem? Well, that's where the function, I haven't got that far to it yet. That's how I do it. So I would I would just, I, would, I know my track is, or my, my yeah, drums are 93, because I marked them. I always mark them, so I know what tempo it is, yeah. just in case. Uh, but you do get an option here when you import it. So you can import a BPM file, but I'm not, create, it needs, the loop then needs to have the BPM file with it somehow. Right. Uh, loop BPM or no chains. So I always click no chains and I've got my loop on track number one. And that's a preset length, is it? Yeah, so that's two bars, right? right. Is that two bars? Yeah. And that's so, just and that's, that's my... because that's what the Yurt Rock stuff is. Yeah. It's just a two. It could bar. be two or four bars, but you yeah. can you know you can stick it into your logic and make it longer if you want to. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about this is that now because this is your king track, when you want to go on record for you know yeah. you, you can record as long as you want on it. So I'll grab my guitar now. So th this is a good example, right? It, it, using Ed's workflow, the multi mode. Every loop that Pete wanted to add to this would have to stick to two that bars. two bar yeah. format. Yeah. But in sync mode. And we'll do this. Let's make the second yeah. track four bars let's, long. Let's do it. Right. So now I've got my guitar. I'm just going to go in and check the guitar effects. So I go back into your main screen. Mm -hmm. You click the guitar effects. Uh, I know that I think I put some on this one here. I think I put some chorus on, didn't I? No, I didn't. So that's good. So now I've set my effects. And they're going pre or post so they can go in before or they can go in after. So I, if, I, if I do them before, they'll go onto the recording. And if not, you know, they'll come out the other way if that makes sense. So, track, I've armed track two now. I could say I want to play guitar on that track, but you can hear the difference in the effects, right? Right. So the effects will be on that track. I've got bass for this one down here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, just go and see here. So this will be my... I'm pretty sure we put a bass amp yeah, on it. Yeah, so bass amp in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty easy to do. Back to my waveform, back to track two. Turn that up a bit. So I'll start the drums and then I can we can arm the track and then come yeah. in. So here we go. So now that's a great example of how we've done, we've used that sync mode because obviously it's a much longer. Now track three doesn't have to be. It could be two, yeah. two bars again if you wanted to, be. which is kind of cool. You still have to remember to, this is the main track. So, yeah. that's the, so you have to start at the top of that, right? Got it. Okay. So you tell me when you want me to start you off. <laughs> One and a two and a three and a four. Oh, 
There we go. Now that's super clever. So your, so your third track wasn't as long as your second track, but because your first track it knows is the primary track, it synced it to play. That's, re that's really interesting. You can see these three lines moving across the three tracks at different rates. Very clever. So now, a bit of bass. Yeah. Why not? Could put some acoustic down, but we might leave the acoustic videos just for Ed. Yeah, why not? Apparently he's good at those. <laughs> so now we're going to arm track four. And then, uh, one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Uh. And then, of course, if you want to mix it a bit, you say the bass is a bit too loud. That's yeah. where this is just genius. Well, not genius, because it's. It, but this is where you've got true, you know mixing capabilities within here that you wouldn't have on a on a smaller you know looper look so, at that man i love it take that down a bit and what you've literally just witnessed there is pretty much what pete does in our videos <laughs> and, and then what we would do if it was a normal anderson's video is we'd plug into our normal guitar amplifiers yep again mic'd up separately going into our uh, interface and we do the jam so you end up with, not only do you get the loops on your four separate tracks, you've got the guitar solos on different tracks as well. It's like... It's magical, it's a isn't great, it? It's a great bit of kit. We're going to use this all, all the, the time. time. Absolutely. Uh, just to go back and show it. So this is the wave mode, like we mentioned before. Oh, yeah. This is the track mode. So you so, see... So the little green lines going across the yeah. top here have sort of replaced that uh, sense of whereabouts in the loop, are you? And then these are just level indicators. And then we can, of course, jam. If you do want to peel back those layers again, because now we did Which the, one did you do so multi-layered on? I did double did one track on track two. two. And let's go there, so we can actually hear it. Was it that one? Or was Pretty it? sure. No, it's track It's this one. There's two oh, tracks yeah, on sorry, there. you're right. So you can go, you can either, now you arm the track, so that's the track there. You can either hold it back, so let, watch this. This is this is a peel. So yeah, so it's did that say you've got essentially three layers? Got three on it. layers. Yeah, so, it's under, so if you do it again, will it take the second layer out? Oh, okay. So, so now there's no nothing left there. I can't go back to it, unfortunately. Oh no, sorry. But, I tell it like it was track track three, one yeah, layer, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So now that's gone. But anyway, I mean it's so super handy. And if we just say I want to save that, so I click save. Uh, mm. I'm going to save it as because I don't want to over save that one there. And I say. Uh, jam two. Call it jam. It is. Oh god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is where jam. the most complicated thing is naming it. To um, save. Boom. Done. So it's saved. Now of again, and what, then what you've here. kind of, what you've kind of witnessed in this video is um, magic. How familiar <laughs> Pete has become with this product of just maybe twenty four hours of, of, of messing around. Yeah, since using yesterday, it. basically. Um, yeah. So I, I think. You know, really, Looper X, you know, it, th this is something that I think over the coming months you'll see us probably go, oh, I've, I didn't even realize you can do that and oh, we'll yeah, start yeah, yeah. using that. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure uh, what's going to be really fun with this over the next few months is seeing all the videos that, you know, guys like you put out, you, you know, using it and going, oh, I discovered this and I did this thing with vocals yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And of course, I've said it at the beginning of this video, go and watch Ed do his thing on this as well because it is crazy. It is crazy. But there you go, man. I like it's it. It's super cool. Yeah, it's good. 
mean, I it's like not cheap, it. but you know, that's, no, it is what it is. It's the uh, top of the range looper that there yeah, is. It's, it's substantial. It's, it's the real it's thing proper, that, yeah. you know, Ed is not using a customized version of this. Yeah. Ed's using this. Yeah. So yes, it's pro, you know, it's pro and it is, you know, yeah. it's, it's top of the range kind of money as well. But hey, I mean, did we even tell you? It's more than a thousand pounds. I'm just saying hey. that. Which is a good segue to maybe tell you about this one, because this is much more affordable. This is less than 300 pounds. Yeah. Uh, we're going to shoot the video on this next. If you check the links below, um, you should find a link for this video. I think the big one is this video is going to come out on the day these are launched. Yeah. So you might have to wait till the next day to see this video. But if yeah. you're watching this anytime from like the 1st of March onwards, you should just be able to go straight down and check this video out as Absolutely. well. Okay, thank so you very we, much. Uh, we jam out? Yeah, let's, let's jam out. It. Absolutely. See you later, guys. Hey everybody, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. This is the last song we're going to do for this evening. <laughs> X going to get you. Ed Sheeran's going to get you. One more time. Looper X going to get you. Oh, maybe Ed Sheeran's going to get you. X gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. One more time. Looper X gonna get you. Oh, maybe Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. X gonna get you. He's gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. Be careful out there, kid. Looper X gonna get you. Oh, maybe Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. I don't know. X gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. Looper X gonna get you. Oh, maybe Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. X gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. Is he gonna get you? He's gonna loot you, though. Looper X gonna get you. Oh, maybe Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you. <laughs> is he gonna get you? Yes, I maybe think he is. X gonna get you. Ed Sheeran's gonna get you.